After being forced to resign from her position as DNC chair for rigging the primaries in favor of the candidate that would ultimately lose to Donald Trump, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is back. And this time, she has a message for everyone. She's the victim, not Bernie Sanders, not his supporters, because everyone is blaming her for rigging the primary when she didn't rig the primary. Take a look. I will be frank with you. That if I was trying to rig the outcome of this primary, trust me, I could have done, there are so many things that we, we, not I, we could have done to enhance the campaign of one candidate over another. But things went pretty well for Bernie Sanders, actually, in this, in right, this election. Right, which is why it was mind-boggling to me that he was complaining about the number of debates, because things were going just fine. The, the Sanders campaign began aggressively trying to find a scapegoat and turn the attention away from mistakes they, that they made. Um, and they, they did so successfully and, and, and made me the, the boogie woman. But that's okay. Wow. So that's an example of cognitive dissonance if I've ever seen one. Let me ask you this, Debbie. If you didn't actually rig the primary in favor of Hillary Clinton, then why were you forced to resign from your position as DNC chair? Did you do it just on your own accord? No, you were forced out. Why were you forced out? Uh, because you violated the DNC's own charter in order to help bolster Hillary Clinton's campaign. And let me ask you this. If you also didn't rig the primary, why is there currently an ongoing class action lawsuit against the DNC where people are alleging that you defrauded them? I mean, if you didn't rig the primary, then why do all signs directly point to you rigging the primary? And furthermore, isn't you resigning in the first place an implicit admission of guilt? I mean, I, I just don't know like how you can claim that you're the victim. It's unbelievable. Now, a couple other things that she said. She said, if I was trying to rig the outcome of this primary, there were so many things that I could have done to enhance the campaign of one candidate over the other. Again, she's living in an alternate reality. Let's go back and review some of the things. So just to give you a recap, in 2008, Obama and Clinton debated each other about 25 times. However, this time, the DNC literally coordinated with Clinton's campaign to only sanction six debates. And when they realized that just doing six debates would probably be a controversial decision, they decided to implement an exclusivity clause that would prohibit candidates from participating in non-DNC sanctioned debates. So if CNN decided, you know what, we're going to do our own debate and invite the Democratic primary candidates, then if they participated in that, they would be banned from participating in future DNC sanctioned debates. You didn't want the message of anyone but Hillary Clinton getting out there. And since Hillary Clinton has the name recognition, since everybody knows Hillary Clinton, the best strategy would be to hide away any challenge that she might face. You did that. You did help Hillary Clinton to the disadvantage of everyone else. Now also, let's not forget about the money laundering scheme. Let's not forget about how you banned Bernie Sanders' access to NGP Van to cripple his campaign at a crucial time right before the Iowa caucus. Also, DNC operatives tried to create media narratives to sabotage Bernie's campaign, saying that his campaign was in shambles or that he was an atheist. And also, in emails released by WikiLeaks, you admitted that Bernie's campaign campaign was good at deflecting criticism and that you, quote, can't let them get away with this. You also tried to delegitimize Bernie Sanders supporters by lying about their behavior and by claiming that chairs were thrown during the Nevada Democratic Convention. Let's not also forget about the conflict of interest. You were Hillary Clinton's campaign chair in 2008. Not to mention the fact that you worked with Hillary Clinton's campaign to move red states up on the primary schedule to advantage Hillary Clinton, seeing that she would presumably be the most conservative candidate, thus giving her the edge in red states and conservative states. If that's not rigging, or at least disadvantaging Bernie Sanders, then I don't know what is. Now, it's not just Bernie Sanders. You did this to everyone that would potentially challenge Hillary Clinton, and the establishment made it very clear that they were going to do everything in their power to shove Hillary Clinton down our throats. Well, look what happened. It backfired on you. You created a primary that was inherently unfair for anyone that would be challenging Hillary Clinton because the odds were stacked against everyone else. And also, I forgot about the uh, superdelegates. 
that automatically helped Hillary Clinton. She had a huge superdelegate lead before any voter casted their ballot. Also, there were voting irregularities in various states that for some reason always seemed to benefit Hillary Clinton to the, de to the detriment of Bernie Sanders. So I just, I don't understand how you are failing to see why people think you rigged the primaries, Debbie. Now, she also implied that since Bernie Sanders did so well, it was, quote, mind-boggling to me that he was complaining about the number of debates because things were going just fine. Right, and the fact that his campaign was so successful in spite of this disadvantage begs the question, what would happen if we were to rehold the primaries under fair conditions? Well, Certainly, it's the case that Bernie Sanders could have actually won. We don't know that for sure. This is a hypothetical, this is speculation, but it is the case that Bernie Sanders was at a huge disadvantage because of your shenanigans. So if we actually did a primary in fair conditions, Bernie Sanders could very well be the nominee and Donald Trump would not be the president right now because if Bernie Sanders did in fact become the nominee, he would have probably defeated Donald Trump because he was, in fact, polling ahead of Donald Trump outside of the margin of error, unlike Hillary Clinton when you look at hypothetical matchups. So when you consider that fact, you basically are guilty of giving us Donald Trump, Debbie. Do you not realize that? You gave America Donald Trump all because you really wanted to help Hillary Clinton get elected because she was promising you a spot in her administration. Face it, you put your own self-interest above the interests of the country. That is selfish, that's disgusting, and it's corruption. Another thing that I take issue with, she said, the Sanders campaign began aggressively trying to find a scapegoat to turn attention away from the mistakes they made, and they did so successfully and made me the boogie woman. This is projection right here because... You were a part of Hillary Clinton's campaign because right when you were forced to resign from your position as DNC chair, Hillary Clinton made you honorary campaign chair. And since you were a part of her campaign, why do you think Hillary Clinton lost? Are you looking at your own mistakes? No, you're saying it was sexism, the media, James Comey, Bernie Sanders, Bernie bros. You can't take responsibility for your own mistakes. So you have the audacity to look at other people when you have no ability to have any sort of introspection whatsoever and say, well, you know, it wasn't us rigging the primary, it was Bernie Sanders and his mistakes. Are there mistakes that Bernie Sanders probably made? Sure, I think that maybe he could have done a better job at reaching out to African American voters. But that doesn't erase the fact that he was incredibly disadvantaged in comparison with Hillary Clinton because she had the entire DNC working in her favor. Bernie Sanders had the DNC working against him, and he still won 22 states. It's just shocking to me that she could be this dense. So, Debbie, you have to stop. Take responsibility once and for all and realize that you are probably the most toxic political entity in the country, more so than Hillary Clinton, more so than Donald Trump, because you are probably at the top of the list, at least part of the top three people responsible for giving us the Donald Trump presidency when you exclude people that actually voted for Trump. So Debbie, you've screwed up the country, you've given us Donald Trump, you facilitated his victory with your shenanigans by disenfranchising the base, and now you honestly have the gall to come out here and say Bernie Sanders was trying to scapegoat you and that you were the victim? No. No, you're not the victim, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The voters who you defrauded were the victims, and I hope that they actually can be compensated with this class action lawsuit, because what you did was wrong. And the fact that you can't own up to it is, honestly, it, it's just outrageous to me.